It's gonna be one of them type of days. So, man, I was trying to do this video on my computer, but I'm at this like resort. Oh, let me, I'll give you too much info. I was at this um resort and I tell you, boy, the Wi-Fi shitty. And I ain't necessarily sure if this video going to come across clean and clear, but I'm going to try it because I feel like I need to get this information out. I'm really like that with information. I can't just be sitting on information. I got to share that shit as soon as I get it, because generally it ain't my information It's everybody's information. And that's just kind of how I live. And it's always weird when people hold information. And being in the place that I'm at, it's a lot of people that's holding back information such as Freemasonic secret societies, Rosicrucians, and uh, Druids. What's the other one? Druids. Damn, it's on the tip of my tongue, too. Puritans, but not Puritans. Jesuits. Jesuits. All of these people is in this particular area and location doing spiritual work. And my ancestors say it's time to come down here and do spiritual work, too. So part of the work that I do is, yes, I pop hot shit on YouTube and Instagram, I also do spiritual work and reverse rituals, mainly on the East Coast, because that's where all of the wards are at. So there are these non-physical wards that you have to get into the grids and rearrange and change it around from a non-physical level. And then you become the seed for major changes. I've been doing spiritual work like in the field and I've seen the world change 50 50. You understand before me and my family went to Harvard to grace and reverse some of them Chesapeake Bay rituals. The world was kind. I mean, the world is still kind of crazy, but niggas then got I didn't see niggas get full relief. Niggas who say I've been working so hard. hood. I work all of these hours now. They say, man, I'll be working at the crib. Life is cool. I'm not saying I'm responsible for it, but I remember doing spiritual work and this, the stories that niggas was saying, what the stories that niggas was saying. So I'm in that same space right now. And I say all of that to say I'm working, but I'm not working. So books is getting sent out on the 30th. I think we'll go back the 29th or the 28th. No, we'll probably go back to 29th or the 30th. And when we go back, I'm sending the books out. Another thing, I wanted to do Hood in the Morning on YouTube, but I couldn't because of the service. So Hood in the Morning will be back on YouTube once we get back in town. Root Chakra Activation is important. I'm transitioning. Root chakra activation is important because it allows you to deal with your emotions. If you don't actively, if you don't actively, specifically activate your root chakra, like I am activating my root chakra. A lot of people can't say that they've done that. Then you start to deal with your emotions. You always deal with your emotions. Your emotions run your fucking life, but you have no control over your emotions. You have no concept in how to deal with your emotions. Specifically because you haven't activated your root chakra. Now, we might want to say, get on the internet. The internet being your emotions. Your root chakra is cutting the computer on. How e Now, how difficult would it be for you to get on the internet without cutting the computer on? It would be all be it impossible. So I want to be clear, activate your root chakra, understand your emotions, be specific with the shit. Don't be abstract with the shit. 
If you do not know how to activate your root chakra specifically, you need to buy Chakra Nova because niggas will tiptoe around the chakra shit and they won't be direct. Y'all want to get on the Internet. Y'all want to do check your finances, right? Want to do everything on your computer, but do not know the specifics of activating your root chakra. Thus, you will automatically imagine that your root chakra is activated. I beg to differ that it isn't. But let's get into this build. We send our children to school. <laughs> we send our children to school. And we teach them. We teach them that one plus one equals two. How does that make sense? Well, you say hood. I'm trying to find something. I got one baby shoe. And I got a mask and I got one plus one equals two. You say, hood, one plus one equals two. I say, that don't make no sense to me. Because when me, I'm one, my wife, she's one, come together, we create a child. That's three. One plus one equals three. You see that? But if you stay in a specific space, in a specific left brain prison, you actually think one plus one is two. And there is no growth. So what Western education does, it stunts your growth and your understanding and in co connection to nature. Because all concepts within nature, if one masculine and one feminine come together, they create three. Now, one masculine is one person, one feminine could be one spirit, one soul, one non-physical abstract concept. But when you put it together, you are creating life. So in understanding the deeper concepts of life is really found in one plus one equals three. You need to stay in that frequency. You need to stay in that resonance because what this artificial intelligence species of people will sit here in your face and tell you that one plus one equals two. And if you hold that resonance, you will get an A for the rest of your life. You will get a degree. You will get accolades. You will get awards but you would have not promoted any life on the planet. People would have shouted your name when you walked through the building, right? But you were incorrect on the most basic premise of addition. Now, if your basic premise is flawed, then every subsequent premise is flawed. So when you align yourself to this Western system, you are flawed. So when you rate your men, to this system, you are flawed. When you rate your women to this system, you are flawed. When you rate yourself to this system, you are flawed. Because bear witness, when you go into school and you tell your teachers this, they'll look at you like you're a fucking idiot. I look at you like you're a fucking idiot if you really conceptually think that one plus one equals two in reference to us. The person that's thinking it, of course, within the inanimate, inanimate object, when you rate yourself against, I don't have a job, I don't have money, I'm not this, I'm not that, because this is what society says that you should be. When actually, if you can create a child, All you have to all you would have to really do is get into the space of uh, birth rates. Right. Birth rates. 
meaning that a person can't even create a child if you hold a specific species and a specific uh, DNA genetic code. Meaning that you come to live and you come to die and that's it. But when you deal with certain energies and certain other species and DNAs and genetic codes, you will find that they produce like rabbits. But the entities and species and the artificial intelligence who cannot produce life have all of the intellectual knowledge in relation to standards and actual rules and laws. But the ones who are outside of the rules and laws are considered to be dumb. But after the smart people are dead because they didn't have any children, the dumb people, quote unquote, are still alive. So if my genetics are smarter than you, then I'm smarter than you. If, if you know more than me, but you can't even figure out a way to live past your life. I'm not a smart guy, but I got four children, four boys. That makes me a genius when you think about life, when you think about the whole grand scheme of things. Specifically, if I was a spiritual being and people celebrated me, patted me on my ass, put crowns on me and things of that nature, blew up my DMs, gave me all types of monies and things of that nature. When I'm dead, I'm dead. To which the energy and entity that can look at his offspring and give forth inheritance. Because the reason why a lot of black people are behind is because they lack inheritance, right? How are you going to make it if your peer is getting a million dollar head start? $500,000 head start. It don't even make sense, right? And you just out here living check to check because your mama and daddy live check to check to which your peers may have got six figure inheritances. Thus, the person who can instill resources, correct knowledge, because a lot of y'all telling y'all children incorrect knowledge, such as one plus one equals two. Y'all think y'all perfectly fine with that in reference to your children and their ability to learn arithmetic. One plus one equals two. Now, if if me and you got together and all we equated to was two, then how do we grow and how do we expand? How can you grow and expand if you limit it by the concept of two? Because two is an abstract. The reality is that when two people come together, multiplication, exponential, you either go and create a, a benefit or you going to create a waste. You going to create a positive or you going to create a negative. One plus one equals three or one plus zero equals one. <laughs> right. So me plus nothing just equals me. But if I add another entity such as my spirit, such as my soul, such as my heart, such as my direction, such as my purpose, such as my wife, such as my children, such as you guys on this live. That automatically equates to growth and abundance mindset. So I really want to let people digest that for a second and understand that when they really get into a space of manifestation, your left brain is telling you that one plus one equals two, but your right brain is clearly telling you that one plus one equals three. And the concept is, are you going to hold the resonance of your left brain or your right brain or figure out a way to combine the two? Because on this picture, if you look closely, you see the cube 
and you see the pyramid. Now the cube and the pyramid are the same. It's the same shape, right? But the but the cube is the whole thing, right? It is the upper body and the lower body. What the Egyptians did was flip the cube and put the put it on its points. So you have your northeast point and you have your southwest point diametrically opposed and then like a top. The pyramid is thus buried in the ground. The pyramid is a cube, but just half of it is buried, which the message is your subconscious mind is not to be seen. And whatever comes from your subconscious mind will have an actual point. Thus, you will always be moving in a direction of northeast. What the fuck are you talking about, hood? You sound so fucking crazy right now. If I was to travel south, right, if I was in Detroit and I decide to travel to Tuscaloosa or some shit, the direction that I'm going is south, which is chronological time, chronological direction, space and time. I'm going south, but I couldn't go backwards. Because theory is if I'm going south, then I must be going backwards, right? Thus. The compass is going to change, always pointing north, even though I'm going south. The reason why you wouldn't know if you're going south, west, east, west, you don't know where you're going because you're always going north. If you wanted to move forward, you would be going in a northeast direction. You'll be going straight and you'll be going right. Y'all be going left and y'all be going wrong and y'all be going backwards and you'd be confused about these about these methods and modes that our ancestors left for us because nobody's going to tell you. That's why you got to actually channel. Because I'm sure I never heard this before, but it make perfect sense to me. Because I'm in tune with a specific entity and a specific energy that's giving me this information. And I'm giving it to you. I'm sharing it to you. And it's, it, it, it got to be something that we got to process and we got to understand. So, once again, I'm just getting started. I'm just kind of setting the table. I'm just kind of showing y'all, like the basics of my conversation, but it's low key mind blowing, even in this basics, even in this basic form. So from an astrological perspective, it's a lot going on, but I want to be specific to the top of the screen where you have Saturn and then you have it squaring all of this Aries energy. So for the most part, you have the sun, you have Mercury, you have Uranus, and you have Venus, all in the energy of Aries. So expressing what we love based on how we truly think, expressing what we love based on how we truly think. And so, of course, if you're not mindful of this, you will express that which scares the fuck out of you, right? Because you wasn't very mindful in what you truly thought. That's Mercury, the communicator of truth, not the communicator of what I want to hear. The concept of Mercury is that of sperm. So sperm is saying you're pregnant, right? Sometimes you don't want to be pregnant. <laughs> But if you fucking, you're going to get pregnant sometimes. Sometimes you fucking, you don't get pregnant. But wherever you're at, that's the truth. How you want it to be, irrelevant. However, within that truth, if you get over how you want it to be, and you just deal with the specific truth, you'll get to understand, one, why you're in it, and two, how you get the fuck out. But if you romance this shit, meaning that you don't get into a space of communication of truth, then what's the next step, guys? Communication of lies, whether you like it or not. 
So expressing what we love based on how we truly think and also aligning with the deep changes. So sun, Mercury, Venus are personal planets. We deal with these energies all the time, right? But Uranus is a transpersonal pr planet. It requires you to think outside of the box in reference to your fucking life. Think outside of the box to my life, meaning that you must change. <laughs> you must change. And if you were doing good, you must change. If you are fucking up, you must change. Why? Because the energy of not changing will ultimately make you feel like you were fucking up. And if you were already fucking up 2021, you know you've been fucking up 2020, 2021. You've been getting away with it. Saturn thus is the more paternal energy to say you're going backwards and you're not seeing what's in front of you. Thus, the idea is to turn around and see specifically what's in front of you because this energy is aligned with Aries, aligned with beginnings. OK, so it's very simple. We have an opportunity to embrace a new beginning, a new path. And this is specifically in psychic functions and communicating with your ancestors. Generally, a lot of people was getting into this shit, trying to get money trying to get love, trying to get all of this shit that muggles got. What am I talking about? You watch Harry Potter? Harry Potter is a sp spiritual, magical story. And most of the people that's in the movie, they're oblivious to all the magic that's going on. I'm talking about magic. I'm talking about seeing beyond the veil, right? Within that concept, it's Harry Potter one, two, it's about 20 Harry Potter's books. You never heard Harry Potter like, damn, what the fuck am I going to do for the rent? Man, I hope this girl like me. This nigga fighting whole demons and whole gods and shit like that. So the concept does, is it muggle shit or are you on some magical shit? Right. And thus you would get out of so money, you could get a job. Fill out a resume, work two jobs, um, save your money, investopedia.com, um, babypips.com. Um, none of this is in relation to spiritual matters. And it's hella millionaires, billionaires, thousandaires who don't give a fuck about spirituality. You might want to listen to people like that. Love. Everybody fucks. Everybody gets married. <laughs> Everybody has children. That's more human, biological, animalistic. Thus, is a dog going to his psychic to figure out if his baby mama cheating on him with Brutus down the street? Because sexual energy is animalistic on that level. Of course, you can spiritualize it. But please, before you spiritualize the mundane, Please understand that you can spiritualize any and everything to which you wouldn't necessarily know spirituality from a hole in the ground if you're trying to incorporate spirituality into your muggle nature. So what am I saying? I'm trying to tune your minds beyond your physical environment. So now I got to backtrack to what I said earlier. If your root chakra is not activated then you can't deal with your emotions. Your emotions fuck you up. They take you out of your relationships. They take you out of your present moment. They take you out of conversations. They take you out of your growth. They take you out of your development. They take money out your pocket, right? They take food out your refrigerator. Your emotions. But you can't control your emotions because your emotions are the internet. They connect you to everybody and every everywhere. And it's already happening. The Internet is taking place, whether your computer is on, whether your computer is off. To which if you want to get on the Internet and put your shit in and balance your emotions, you have to balance your root chakra. We get straight into the, to the specifics. Of that specific concept of balancing your root chakra, because it's not abstract. 
It's not rigmarole. It's not, oh, mumbo jumbo. It's not talk to you in a whole bunch of different um, dialects and things of that nature. It's a specific, clear concept, right? Chakra Nova, still 30% off. I got a limit. Once I hit this limit, it's not going to be 30% off and you don't get a free workbook. And ultimately, it's not my emotions that I'm worried about. I'm not even worried about your emotions. It's your emotions that you're worried about because you're not connected to your emotions because you don't know the science in activating your root chakra. Nobody gave it a second to sit back and to think on how to specifically tackle this chakra energy and go about it in a way. And that's kind of my thing. So book is coming out. Just wanted to share that because especially dealing with this energy, sometimes timing is a motherfucker when you really sit back and think about it. The way that this energy is hitting, y'all need chakra work, honestly. And of course, I'm not going to be the one to pat myself on the back because already close to, I don't know, a good amount of people done bought the book already. So when they get the book and they work through the book and they come with their breakthroughs, I'm going to let them speak for it, right? And maybe we can reference this video. I'll timestamp it and we'll come back to this and we'll address it. So with this speech, what this astrology is doing is doing two things. It's awakening me to my troubles, my problems, my, my anxieties, the things that I overlooked because I was moving in a southwardly direction when the only way to move is northeast, right? The top of the pyramid. So the second deacon of Capricorn, if you look at um if you look at the Thoth Tarot deck and you look at the three of discs, right, you'll see Saturn on that card and you'll also see Capricorn. And you'll also take a note that that is the card of the second deacon of Capricorn. OK, so taking a note of that being the second card of like, so we're talking about alignment, right? So Saturn rules Capricorn. Saturn is exalted in Capricorn. Thus, it's time to do the work. And if you look at the card, the card is literally called works. But it's very abstract when you look at it. But when you understand what you're looking at, it makes a lot of sense. You're looking at a pyramid that's like you're looking over and down a pyramid. That's what the card is. But all you see is a point. Like you see blue and then you see lines and things of that nature. But it's all breaking down to a point, meaning that waking up every day, you got to have a point <laughs> with all of the systems breaking down and all of the, the energies breaking down. What's your point? What is your equation? What is your manifestation? What are you doing? Right. Are you just kind of just taking it easy, living leisurely? Capricorn energy is not that. It is literally work. It is literally a point. It is li literally having a point to existence, a point to this day, and working towards that point. Thus, gets us into the mindset of the direction for which we need to travel. Northeast. Okay? Northeast. Just think, I'm traveling north. I'm going, I'm moving forward. You're not retreating. You're not, you're not, you know, defensive. You're moving north. You're heading forward. And this is Aries energy. So where would the square be? <laughs> right? Square is supposed to be negativity or disruption or blocks or challenges. If Saturn and Capricorn is about work and all of this energy in Aries is about new beginnings what would the square be? What would the block be? Right? It would have to be you. So I don't care. Nothing that I can do. Nothing that I can say beyond what I'm actually saying and doing now. Um, Because really, do you want to be great or do you want to be lazy? If you really think about it, right? 
You can choose to be lazy. Or you can choose to be great. That's the square. How do you stay motivated? What are the things that you do to motivate yourself? What are the things that you do to level up? What are the things that you do on a daily basis? Waking up every day with that fire. And what do you have that fire for? As I go in this stage of my life, it is imperative that I have a fire for my children. Y'all got y'all other shit that y'all deal with. I got my shit that I deal with. And so what this brought up is the energy. <laughs> Welcome to um Green Acres. Green Acres is the place for me. <laughs> Living. <laughs> oh, no. So, it's taking it easy, man. Taking it easy. Processing stuff. And also being spirit led and doing a lot of indigenous slavery ritual reversing. So, send me positive energy. Send me negative energy. Hell, we got a whole fucking demonic entity to fight. I got to digress and I'll get back on to the point. Imagine a world of millions of indigenous and travel in this country. You get to see how big this motherfucker is, like how large it is. And then I start to think about the greedy chiefs in the greedy hierarchy that made deals with the fucking devil for selfish reasons and then allowed the devils to have sex with our daughters. And then the children from the sexual Unions was the actual demon seeds that overthrew the whole nation. So when you when I tap into this Pombagira energy, it is very simple. Man, woman and child. We can focus on the man. We can focus on the woman, but we also need to focus on the child. You have to impart wisdoms and truth in your children that school cannot do. Or else you will continue to be in a space where your children will be lied to. Like, think about how egregious it is that we have no consciousness of our history. To the point that is literally called his story. And this is what we reference in referencing the past. To which we are far away from the truth. We're far. And the reason that I get to pick up on certain energies and concepts is because I really deal with this spiritual shit. But it's not to brag. It just is what it is. And I'm not the leader of it. I'm not pushing the envelope or nothing. I'm just a humble and grateful student. So, Pombagira energy deals a lot with sexual energy and shame. Sexual energy and childbirth. Sexual energy and psychic development. When we start a new cycle, we have to tune in and tap in to our power, which is sexual energy. But from our dad, like, so we was a little girl 
in the ancient indigenous tribes. Just imagine the mindset of a little girl, which is our grandmothers. Our grandmothers were once daughters of chiefs and village leaders. When, when Europeans came from Spain, Portugal, England, and France, it wasn't like they had to kill them or fight them because the world was built of different nations, meaning that we could have been on a port in Newfoundland or the port of Baltimore, and we had a merchant place where people would come from all over the world to trade. They like to tell you that indigenous people were savage and had no community, but all you do is reference Paul Hayton and that will just blow that whole shit to smithereens. So you have Paul Hatton, you had the Lenape Indians, you had energies in South America, Central America, nations that had ships that traded goods, traded fabrics, traded all of these things. However, the Europeans, Portugal, France, England, and Spain had a plan to dominate these lands. And they did not dominate these lands through force. They couldn't have done it. It was millions, and it still is millions upon millions of black people in these lands. 1619, they brought 20 African slaves to Jamestown. It's 400 years later, and it's 41 million close, give or take. How do you go from 20 to 41 million? And I know, and I know, and I know what you're saying, and I know what you're thinking. I read his story, and his story is accurate, so I'm going to follow his story, and you don't follow his story, so you're wrong. One plus one equals two, hood. You're talking about inanimate objects. I'm talking about human beings, and I'm talking about make it make sense. I'm in a car. For me to travel from Detroit to goddamn Arizona or whatever undisclosed location I'm at, I don't even remember the state, to be honest. I'm just in a location. Wherever I'm at, it take a long time when I'm in a car. But everywhere I go, I'm traveling. I'm seeing city, town, village, village, town, city, all of these people. You mean to tell me if it was a national threat that all of these people don't converge <laughs> on the coastal lines and defend the land at all costs? And generally, what tend to happen in violent skirmishes with Indians is that Europeans would get their asses handed to them. So when you think about war and when you think about battle, you you didn't ever you got to really travel, travel from goddamn Maine to Florida. And then imagine that before Europeans came, that whole energy coast was people. And they say, oh, no, they died from disease. It's, it's a bunch of lies. Well, one, the people never disappeared. They just miss, they just named the people differently. Right. And then two, what tended to, what tended to happen was that male hierarchies would give their daughters away. Right. This is facts. You could just Google the shit and it's not slavery. It's it's politics. Right. If I'm a king and I have a. I want to do a treaty with this land or this kingdom. Then we do it by swapping daughters or your son marry my daughter. So the first. When they talk about victory, I need to be real clear on this because y'all would be abstract about it. And this is what it is. 
when they talk about the history of this country, they talk about Jamestown, Virginia. They talk about John Smith and they talk about Pocahontas. Well, Jamestown was the first settlement, meaning that it was the first fort. It was the first place that England can say we hear. But it was not rooted in military conquest. It was rooted in sexual trafficking. Pocahontas was married to a European man named John Rawls. And then you can Google it. John Rawls and Pocahontas's children were known as the elite of Virginia's the mother and the mother and fathers of Virginia were descendants of Pocahontas and John Rawls. Once they had the children, they sent Pocahontas to England and she ended up dying or murdered, depending on how you look at it. So thus, when it came to hierarchical situations, your leaders were now half European. Subsequently, over lifetimes, you still cannot be a leader without black blood. You can't be a king or queen. However, you can't be a king or queen without European blood either. But now you get to see the purpose or the root of leadership in this country is passed down by the mother. However, in these shady treaties, they don't talk about, oh, how y'all tricked us. Y'all y'all sold it for silver. There was also a leadership that the people were conditioned to follow. That's why they say all of the presidents are cousins. We then think it's some racial supremacy stuff, but it couldn't be. That don't make sense. That's kind of it's kind of weird. But when you get to the root of it, it's centered into that they're cousins to the queen, and the queen is the queen because of that black blood, that royal blood. Thus, where's the trick at? Where's the confusion at? Your dominant DNA genetic blood structure is royal by default. Their title is royal. Understand the difference and what you respect. Do you respect title or do you respect subconscious, deeper understandings? And if you are into the title, then you might feel less than. The king is over there in the castle and I'm the peasant over here paying rent. Thus, when you tap in and tune in back to the point to Pombagira energy, you then tapping into not your sect, not some people think that, oh, I sold some pussy before. Oh, I be on OnlyFans. Oh, I sent a person a nudie. I have sexual shame. No. No, that's not shame. We talking about ancestral shame from having entities and energies perpetuate false rulership in your name. Y'all really think Washington now go to Europe. I'll, I'll, let's do this. Go to Europe and find me the father and a daddy for Washington. Right. You won't be able to find it because Washington is based upon Washita, the Washita Indians. OK, go and find me um, Johnson's in Europe. You won't be able to do it. You won't be able to do it. So a lot of these American names, like, so I don't care what city you at. There is some uh, allusion to Native American energies and entities. It just, because this is America. <laughs> it's not Europe. It's not England. So thus the names and surnames and birth names and family names 
like Johnson and Johnson, Heinz and the Rockefellers and the Illuminati, Kings, Queens, Divinity is all rooted in African Amer African or just melanated realities that a person seeing say, oh, I, I know how to get into that and I don't have to fight. I don't have to kill nobody. I just have to lie and I have to fuck. If I can fuck enough and I can lie enough, I can get up in there. And then once I'm in there, I'm going to really get it. I'm going to really. Because if I can lie to you about your history. And then I can get you into a space where you real passive. Like fucking is a passive aspect. And then sometimes like if like before, like, I don't know what's happening with the divine feminine is getting stronger. It's growing more wiser. It's getting very powerful. Because the divine feminine said the, the ways that we were oppressed and the ways that we were blocked and, and confused was due to our daddies giving us away. When we were young little girls and having sex with these grown ass men, what were we going to do when we were seven, eight, nine, ten years old? And she's saying it's going like that in India in a lot of different places. And that's why it might be a lot of people that transcend in those types of places. And as we got older, the defined feminine got stronger and was like, you're not going to marry me off when I'm eight, <laughs> nigga. You're not going to do that. And so now you get in more choices and you get in more stronger in your femininity. But you still have to realize that strength requires order. Strength and chaos is just as bad as weakness and order. You got to find an order, a method to your madness, right? Because the anger is not in your lifetime. It is in previous lifetimes of being little girls and being married off. And they're still doing it in spaces of Pakistan, India, Thailand, Bangkok. All of these energies have to be resolved. And you can be perfectly fine in your ivory castle. But when you deal with your frustrations and your emotions, you got to understand that people need you. One, to not be silent and two, not be dumb. Don't be silent. Don't be dumb. OK. As you then address your sexual energy with your shame, you have to remove it. You have to embrace your womb. Because you have to understand shit about past life energy and get over it. And then don't don't make decisions out of shame, basically. This is what understanding does. It slowly removes the shame because the shame is like a covering of your power. And it's not to say walk around naked, but definitely walk around in your homes naked. Get that power back. Get that energy back. Because the reason why you would say I can't go outside naked is because of shame. You don't want to be known <laughs> as the guy or the girl that walk naked outside. Well, that's cool, but at least learn to walk and feel naked in your homes, within your relationships. Sexual energy and childbirth, quite natural, understood, except when y'all fucking. <laughs> Nobody think like y'all fucking raw busting in each other and damn you pregnant. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I didn't even know. I didn't even know I could have it. I can't even know I did. I can do that. And so men
I guess it's an excuse because you give yourself excuses, but learn not to give yourself excuses. The Trump, the, the troubles that you face in relation to avoiding your children and you could even be in the same house with your children and still avoiding your children. Not having any father skills, not having a father in your life. When you deduce it all, you like, damn, I was just trying to get a nut. You got a nut. All right. So part of it is reducing your ambition, your assertiveness and learning to give to your children. Imparting wisdom, imparting finances, imparting all of the things that they're going to need to move forward because your ass at some point is going to die and your children will live on and carry on your legacy. One thing's for sure, two things for certain, my sons won't have girlfriends over them having wives. And I can't control them, but I can impart in them truths. And my job is to make it make sense to them so they could affirm it within themselves, energies and conversations that make sense. I'm not gonna force it but I'm going to try to explain to them and show them a world in relation to just letting your dick do the thinking. That's not a good world. So all of this is Aries energy in relation to Pombagira and getting your understanding right. Your sexual energy is deeper than this lifetime is more tied in to your ancestors and your ancestors have a way different story than you. And in order to understand,